on to hyperbolic geometry. What happens when we say, Euclid, we don't want your parallel postulate. It doesn't belong. It's not the way I want to live my life. I rebel against everything I was ever taught. I accept the hyperbolic parallel postulate instead. Now, so we're all clear, the hyperbolic parallel postulate says, I have a line, I have a point not on that line, there is not just one parallel to the line through the point. There is more than one parallel to the line through the point. And you argue those don't look like lines. But line was an undefined term. So yes, there can be. And we are going to postulate for the next few lessons that the hyperbolic parallel postulate is in place which would mean that the Euclidean parallel postulate is false. And once the Euclidean parallel postulate is false, there are some things to consider. First things first, if you have a triangle, the angles of that triangle add up to less than 180 degrees. This is because triangles look roughly like this in hyperbolic geometry. So you get three angles that add up to something less than the 180 degrees that Euclidean geometry gives to us. Uh, so for any triangle, the defect is between 0 and 180, that distance between, that difference between the sum of the angles, some of the measures of the angles, and 180 degrees has to be greater than 0 and less than 180. Greater than 0 because we're in the hyperbolic geometry, less than 180 because you have to have a positive angle sum. Uh, similarly for quads, if you were to draw a random hyperbolic quadrilateral and add up all the angles there, well, that's just two triangles, so if this is less than 180 and this is less than 180, the sum adds up to less than 360. Uh, similar triangles. Similar triangles are gone in the hyperbolic plane. They just don't exist. Bye-bye, similar triangles. Uh, by the way, similar non-congruent triangles. Congruent triangles are similar, so... Similarity does exist, but not in the way we think of it, having been raised with Euclidean geometry. Likewise, the summit angles of a Sicari quadrilateral are acute. So I take my Sicari quadrilateral, which has two right angles, and these sides are congruent in hyperbolic geometry these summit angles must be acute. In neutral, we proved they cannot be obtuse. In Euclidean, we proved that they are right. In hyperbolic, the alternative is true. They are acute. Likewise, the fourth angle of a Lambert quadrilateral. So right angle, right angle, right angle. If you get three right angles, that fourth angle is acute. This angle is acute. Must be, because if it were right, then you'd get an angle sum equal to 360 degrees, and if this were obtuse, you'd get an angle sum greater than 360 degrees. That's a problem. There are no rectangles in the hyperbolic plane. They do not exist couple of things about Lambert's and Sicari's. In a Lambert quadrilateral, the Lambert, he's French, in a Lambert quadrilateral, the length of a side between two right angles, the length of this side, is less than the length of its opposite side. Strictly less than. So, we know from neutral that this side has to be less than or equal to that one. We proved that in neutral geometry. So let's pretend that they were the same. 
if they were the same, then what I would have here is a Sicari quadrilateral, and a Sicari quadrilateral has congruent summit angles. But we can't have congruent summit angles because this is right and this can't be right because then you got a rectangle. Rectangles are bad. So that side must be less than its opposite side. Similarly, for Sicaries, the length of an altitude is less than the length of a side. Now, using terms properly here, in a Sicari quadrilateral, the altitude connects the midpoint of the summit and the midpoint of the base. This is less in length. Here, this, oh, go purple. This purple altitude connecting midpoint and midpoint is less in length than the length of a side. These two red segments out here. Not hard to do. We proved in neutral geometry that this segment is per oh, is perpendicular to the base and perpendicular to the summit. We proved that in neutral geometry. If you connect the midpoints of the summit and the base, you get something that's perpendicular to both the summit and the base. If that's the case, then that's a Lambert quadrilateral. And that's a Lambert quadrilateral. And in a Lambert quadrilateral, the side between two right angles has to be shorter than the opposite side, the opposite side. So by using Sicari properties, we get Lambert properties. And by using Lambert properties, we get Sicari properties. Similarly, you can prove that the length of the summit is greater than the length of the base. This should be fairly obvious to you. Very straightforward. So things that we thought were true in Euclidean geometry are no longer true. Here's one that'll blow your mind. Similarity implies congruence. That is to say, if two triangles have all three angles matching up with all three angles, then those triangles must be congruent. Must. And this proof is kind of nifty. So you take the traditional picture of similar triangles, same shape, different size. Take triangle ABC and triangle DEF. A is congruent to D. B is congruent to E. C is congruent to F. We assume they are similar. We want to prove that they are congruent. And that's actually easy to do. Uh, without loss of generality, we're going to pretend that this triangle is the bigger one. We're going to pretend that AB is greater than DE and AC is greater than DF. Relabel the vertices if you have to. We're going to assume that the triangle on the left is the quote-unquote bigger one. So here's what we're going to do. We can construct a point on AB such that AB prime is equal to DE and AC prime is equal to DF. So now, what do I know about triangle A, B prime, C prime, and triangle D, E, F? That's right. They are congruent by side, angle, side. Which means that this and that are true. Well, now we have a problem. And our problem lies here. I claim that the sum of the angles of quadrilateral B prime, B, C, C prime is 360 degrees. 
that's my claim. Well, whatever whatever this is, this is 180 minus that. And whatever this is, this is 180 minus that. So that's alpha, that's beta, that's alpha, that's beta, that's 180 minus alpha, that's 180 minus beta. So now I have an angle sum of 360 degrees. Why is that bad? Correct. So this can't happen. Therefore, B prime is B and C prime is C. And so triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. In hyperbolic geometry, if two triangles are similar, then those two triangles are congruent. And that is wild to think about. So in our next lesson, we're going to take a look at lines that cross and whether they cross in perpendicular ways or not. But that's coming up next time.